Gracious friends, the word of God for today that I requested in my prayers is addressing to two uh, situations or classes of people. Number one, there is a class of people that think um, everything is final. Everything it will be as it appears to be. So they even see the stages of cancer or of loss or of nature. Everything appears set. Is going to go there. That's the first class. Uh, then the first objective of, of the Word of God. The second one, it's us, ourselves, each and every one of us, coming into a situation without a way out. And we think that's final. Well, that's final, comma, not final, period. That's final, comma, because the last word about a situation is not coming from the situation itself, not even for the plan of the devil or from enemies or from ourselves even. Let's go in First Kings 17, 12. We have a widow. We have her son. They are the ones where God sent Elijah. And they have a plan. Their plan reflects the situation, which appears to be logic and, and absolutely unavoidable. So they say uh, to Elijah, the mother, she explained the plan and the situation and the perspective. Everything was set already. It didn't contain any kind of hope at all. Let's listen. I swear by the Lord your God. It was not hers yet. It will be shortly. But for the time being, it's Elijah's God. I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in my house. Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Absolutely nothing. I swear I don't have anything. Second, I have only a handful of flour left and I have a little cooking oil in the bottom of a jug. I ju I'm now th that's that's the situation. Uh, now the action. I uh, was just gathering a few sticks to cook he this last meal she calls it and then my son and I will die. That was the perspective. Friends, many times we feel that we hit a wall. And one of the most painful situations of this kind is the one when you try to put yourself in a different position. You try to stop doing what you see. It's damaging and harming your life. You tried once and twice and many times and for 40 years that man tried to be healed at Bethesda. No, you're disappointed. You hit a wall and then you say, uh, the last hope, it's gone. This is the situation. No, try again. Try. I've been trying for the last 40, 38 years, said that man. Try again, try again. No, I've been trying. That's it. enough. It's enough. Uh, Any time I would try, that would be the same. That's the uh, situation based on the hopelessness of the view. Watch, please. I have only a handful of flour. I have just a little uh, cooking oil on the bottom of a jug. So what am I going to do in this situation? I'm going to cook a, our last meal like those people on the death row. They have the last meal. And naturally... Uh, my son and I will die. That's the course that was in her mind. That's the course that is in many minds. And then the course, it's the course that were in, was in mind that committed that uh, uh, unthinkable. Committed the unthinkable. Now, let's reverse the matter and let's look it from the perspective of God. He said, don't put a a period where God puts a comma. Watch. Verse 13. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. 
Do not look how little flour you have, how little oil you have. Do not look upon the perspective that you will have the last meal and you'll, you will eat with your uh, son and then you will die. Don't, don't be afraid of anything like that. It's a mental construction. It's a product of imagination better than of the reality. Listen now the word of God. Go ahead. Do what you've said. That's a good part of the plan, gathering stick of wood and cooking the last meal. Go ahead, did what you said, but uh, uh, make a little bread for me first. No, we we already have little. If we if I take from this, uh, take out some uh, another piece from this little. What's left in this case? Well, you'll see. Whatever you take for God, it's opened the floodgates of blessings. Then says Elijah, use what's left to prepare a meal, not the last meal, for yourself and your son. And now. Uh, it, it's easy to inspire false hope or empty hopes. Too many people, I saw this in hospitals, in sufferings, in loss, in stuff. Words, absolutely empty words. But Elijah doesn't, or the prophet of God, the man of God doesn't use empty words. He supports his words with the supreme evidence. Verse 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will, oh, this is not Elijah, no, this is not his opinion, it's not his encouragement, his politeness, no, 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 no. This is God. This is the word of God. Uh, stronger than the mountains, stronger than the heavens, stronger than the entire world together. They will pass away, my word will not. This is what God says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crop grows again. This is the word of God. Verse 15. She went away. She did as Elijah had told her. That's faith. That's full trust. That's holy faith, total faith, complete faith. Not in Elijah, he was a stranger, but uh, in the word of God, uh, thus says the Lord. That, th that is where she anchored her hope. So full of faith, she went out, she did everything. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. So, yes. God not only alters the course of real events, real situation, logical thinking, logical conclusion, hopeless and stuff like that. God not only uh, alters this course, but he reverses it. He turns death into life. Those two anonymous who thought they were condemned to death and to be anonymous for the rest of history. They were kept alive, number one, but that's what is secondary. Uh, number one, the real number one, it consists in the fact that they've been made a symbol of hope for hopeless people. My precious friends, in half a century of ministry, I visited so many hopeless people, so many hopeless people. How many times I wished I would be in their stead. I knew how to trust God, uh, uh, what to think in a situation like this, sometimes because I was there myself. But I could not. They, you have to take it down yourself. You have to think yourself. You have to trust yourself. Nobody can eat for you or drink water for you. It's impossible. You have to do it yourself. And you have to anchor, not in in this situation, not in the empty words of the people, either good or bad, no, you have to, not in the words of the minister, not in the words of the church, forget about that. You are called and invited to anchor your hope in the word of God. 
he will not only alter the course of your life and the course of event and the logical end of events, he will transform them from death to life, from curse to blessing, because this is one of the highest expressions of God's love for you and me. Precious Father, what a beauty in your word. How What a flood of hope. I pray for my friends. I pray for everybody struggling with the hopelessness of the situation. Uh, lift up our eyes to you, Lord, and help us to see what you see in every single situation. And thank you for reversing the course of our life going to death. In Christ Jesus, from death to life. Amen.